Once upon a time, there was a little boy named Charlie. At five years old, he was very excited to start school. But before his first day arrived, he went to meet his teacher and everyone else in his class. Hi, Charlie. Welcome to my class. We have lots of activities planned this year. We'll learn to count, read stories, and so much more. The other kids are excited to meet you. Would you like to meet them? While he was a little shy at first, Charlie was soon playing and laughing with his new classmates. Not long after, the teacher had the children participate in a screening in order to make sure each one had the basic academic, social, and emotional skills they'd need to start kindergarten. You did really well today, Charlie. His teacher then explained to Charlie's parents that Charlie's performance in the screening fell within the average range across all categories. We'll see you soon, Charlie. Okay. Days turned into months, and it didn't seem like long to Charlie before kindergarten ended and first grade began. Throughout first grade, Charlie worked hard, and his learning progress stayed on track with most of his classmates. You did great this year, Charlie. Second grade arrived, and Charlie kept up his hard work. But one day, his teacher worried that he was starting to fall behind. She wanted to help him keep up with the other students, so she worked with Charlie and gave him some extra instruction in reading and writing. Another year passed into third grade, but this time, Charlie got really frustrated when he worked on reading or math assignments. So his teacher, Mrs. Espinoza, reached out to his second grade teacher to talk about Charlie's performance. Did Charlie have any difficulties last year? Some, but he responded well to extra instruction. I'd often reteach lessons to Charlie individually. I'd also make sure to provide extra instructions when he worked with a small group. Mrs. Espinoza agreed that it would be a good idea for her to do something similar to support Charlie. She also decided to share her concerns with Charlie's parents. We have noticed him struggling some. We spend a lot of time helping him with math assignments. And when I read with him at night, he has a hard time sounding out words. He gets so discouraged. Is there anything we can do to help him? Don't worry. Keep working with Charlie at home. I'll work with our school's instructional support team to find the best way to help him in the classroom. I'll let you know what recommendations we come up with. The instructional support team, which included the principal, the special education teacher, and Mrs. Espinoza, met to discuss how they could help Charlie more. At this point, I would recommend that you monitor Charlie's performance in your reading and math lessons. I can suggest some evidence-based practice to use in class with him. You can try these interventions and then collect your data to see if he responds well to any of them. The team agreed that this would be a useful next step and asked Mrs. Espinoza to report her findings back to the group within 30 days. Mrs. Espinoza enthusiastically implemented the interventions but when she collected the final data and reported back to the group, she was dismayed. I tried everything we talked about last time we met, but according to the data I collected, Charlie is just not responding well to these interventions. What should we do now? Let's try a multidisciplinary evaluation. The team agreed and went to work on making a formal evaluation request. Once Mrs. Espinoza filled out her form for a formal request, she updated Charlie's parents on the team's efforts. But what exactly does this mean? What exactly will you do with the information in this evaluation? The team will evaluate Charlie to determine if he is entitled to special education services. We won't do it without your consent, of course. And I have some additional information here for you if you have any questions on the process, the procedures, or any of the safeguards we have in place. With Charlie's parents' concerns allayed and their consent obtained, Mrs. Espinoza and the rest of the team went to work. The team began with the information that Mrs. Espinoza collected during the pre-referral process, in addition to interviewing his second grade teacher to learn a little more about his previous performance in class. Next, the special education teacher attended Charlie's classroom to observe him during reading and math lessons, but he wanted to get a better understanding of Charlie's instructional levels in other areas and his behavior outside of class, too. So the special education teacher observed him during a cooperative learning project in science class. He also monitored Charlie on the playground during recess. Finally, before the team could decide if Charlie was eligible for special education services, the special education teacher also gave Charlie norm reference tests to take, and the school psychologist gave him an IQ test as well before they talked to Charlie's parents again. So you're saying that you tested his intelligence with the IQ test and you used the norm reference test to compare him to his classmates? That's right. Has Charlie's behavior at home changed at all? 
Homework time hasn't changed much since the last time we talked. We're just really concerned about him and what goals we should be helping him with. The special education teacher reassured them and promised to give them an update as soon as he could. Later, the team reviewed all the information they had. There was enough available to make a determination. It's clear that Charlie does have a specific learning disability. He has special learning needs, and special education services can help Charlie to meet his educational goals. The rest of the team agreed. Charlie was in fact eligible for special education services. Now that we've determined that Charlie is eligible, we need to develop his individualized educational program. Let's decide on what the most appropriate learning environment would be for Charlie and what the best instructional program would be for him. With additional input from Mrs. Espinoza and the special education teacher, the team got to work on identifying Charlie's least restrictive environment and setting up reading, writing, and math goals that made sense for Charlie. This is great. I'll talk to Charlie's parents to let them know where we'll go from here. These sound like great goals, but with your least restrictive environment, what did you decide was the most appropriate amount of time for Charlie to spend in class with the other students who don't have special needs? We recommend for Charlie's LRE that he maintain general education placement with support from our special education resource classroom. So he'll continue to work with Mrs. Espinosa, but he'll also spend some time in the resource room to receive instruction in reading, writing, and math. We'll also keep you informed throughout the year of Charlie's progress. We'll evaluate how well he achieves his goals within this individualized educational program. This sounds like a good plan. Thank you for all your help. You're welcome. Besides working with Charlie individually for the rest of the school year, Mrs. Espinosa also paid attention to the collective progress of her entire class. In this way, she could ensure that she was doing her job effectively and that all of her students were learning and making progress. She even used data from state tests to compare their progress to other students at the local, state, and even national levels. And throughout that year, she and the special education teacher made certain to regularly update Charlie's parents on his individual progress. At Charlie's next progress update with his parents, the special education teacher and Mrs. Espinosa had some good news to share. We've been working hard with Charlie to reach his IEP goals, and you've both been doing a great job supporting his efforts at home. Hey, I've been working hard, too. You certainly have. You've come a long way since school became more challenging. You were willing to try your best during our in-class exercises and during tutoring. You even worked hard with us so that we could figure out the best way to help you excel in school. We teamed up, set your goals for the year, and you've been making significant strides in reading, writing, and math. You should really be proud of yourself. Way to go, Charlie. Thanks, but I have a question. What's that? Since I did so good, can I have my sticker now?